we are creating a bright and pollinator friendly garden with Chris Moretti from Terra Greenhouses. And, and this is so important because there are bugs that we want in our gardens, right? Yeah, for sure. So I think people are becoming more and more aware of this, that we want to support pollinator health and that includes bees and butterflies, all sorts of things. So creating a diverse, balanced garden is a big part of making sure that pollinators feel welcome in your garden and have places to nest and to feed and to enjoy. Okay, and by diverse, you, you mean like having many different types of, of plants and flowers? Absolutely, so um, including native species is a, is a great starting point, mm -hmm. um, but it's definitely not the be all and end all. So right. creating a garden that has things in bloom throughout the entire growing season is a, is a big part of making sure that pollinators wanna be around in your garden. Okay, let's talk about what pollinators really, really like. So bee balm is, is, is one, and, and I was talking to you beforehand. I had bee balm before, but I took it out because there was so much mildew, but there mm -hmm. are solutions to that. Right, so bee balm is a great example of what I'm talking about. We're calling this one a native R. So there is a bee balm, a bergamot, that is native, um, but yeah, mildew is a big problem. So some of the more hybrid versions that have been created of, of bee balm are bred for brighter color and for better disease resistance. So most of what I have here are hybrid versions of native plants um, that have these extra ornamental features, but are still beneficial to pollinators. Okay, because we've got different types of echinacea here. So I'm used to seeing echinacea like this, mm -hmm. but more of a purple leaf with the leaves dropping down. But these are also echinacea. Absolutely, so both of these that you just pointed out are echinacea, and yeah, not not what you would think when you think of a, a, a typical native cone flower. So we've got brighter colors, different forms, so you can get compact short ones that stay smaller at the front of your garden, or um, brighter petals. These are sort of a semi-double, that pink one you were looking at. Mm -hmm. um, so they're just more ornamental feature to them. What are these ones here? Is that That's a, a type of salvia. Um, oh, so a, a perennial sage, and the bees really love that one. I've got that along the front border of a garden, and the bumblebees in particular are, are big fans of that one. Um, and beside it is butterfly weed. So we're talking about supporting different types of pollinators, different types of bees, different species of butterflies. Um, so it's about creating um, feeding spaces, like I said, like nectar, but it's also um, being aware of certain plants that you might want to include in your garden in order to have them nest there. Yes. Um, so everyone sort of focuses on monarchs. So we know that milkweed is what we need to have in our gardens if we want monarchs to be yeah, around. Yeah, don't pull that out. I've got some milkweed now that is just like this and I'm like, in, in years past, I would have like pulled that out right away and now it's like, no, no, go ahead, be a home. Yeah, absolutely, and I've done the same. I see it coming up in the garden and, and yeah, you resist the urge to, to pull things. So um, leaving some wild spaces in your garden is a great thing that you can do. So some unkempt areas where um, pollinators can winter, uh, where they can nest, um, making sure that we're not using pesticides and uh, having places where water is in the garden is a mm -hmm. big part of encouraging pollinators okay. too. Okay, we've got about 30 seconds left, mm -hmm. but we're talking about feeding insects, but feeding us as well. So you've got some herb garden things here. Yeah, um, aromatic herbs are actually one of uh, the greatest ways to attract pollinators oh, to your garden. So and nice. mint. beneficial for us too. Yeah. So mint, parsley, sage, dill is a big one. It's, a, it's the nesting flower for swallowtail butterflies. Um, so creating, including herbs along with your ornamentals is a great way to encourage pollinators okay. too. Okay, and today is kind of like the perfect day to plant because it's so nice when the it, when it's rained, the soil is a little bit easier to dig up. So it's it's a good day to, to get planting today. Maybe some, some fresh Friends, uh, friends of the garden. Absolutely, <laughs> and all the perennials are on sale right now, so oh, that's a good thing too. That's a good thing too. You won't have to buy them again next year either. Yeah. Okay, we'll get all the links uh, up to your website, up on our website, chch.com. I just want to keep this all here and smell it all day. I'll let you keep it. <laughs> oh, that smells.